I've shared before that during my years in seminary, I worked for a catering company where we did weddings on the weekends. It was an in-house wedding caterer. It was actually a converted old town hall on the North Shore of Boston. Every Friday and Saturday night, I would be there in a tuxedo serving food and passing hors d'oeuvres. And uh, one of the things uh, uh, about the joint, it was, it was run by a family. And uh, uh, it, it was, a, it was a, and the staff felt like family. We, we all knew each other. And, um, but the guy who owned the place, he, didn't, he wasn't there very often. He just kind of owned the place. And uh, we, we ran the events. And so every once in a while, he would show up to an event. And uh, there was always a different reason for him being there. And you could always tell by the way he was dressed. Uh, it, sometimes he was there to hobnob with the guests. Maybe it was a friend who was having a wedding there. Or, uh, he knew somebody who was attending the wedding. And so he'd be dressed up and he would be there uh, among the guests. And uh, we wouldn't really interact with him all that much. But there were other nights where he showed up in blue jeans. And he would come in the kitchen door. And he would interact with the staff. And he would talk with us, see how things were going, see where he could help out. And I remember just every time I saw Frank, I would judge him by the, what he was wearing. And I would tell what he was there to do. i tell you the story because... During the season of Advent, we, uh, we believe that Jesus is coming is a big deal. And, and last week, we looked at the reality of hope in, in, in the person of who Jesus is. I mean, in who he is, he's the perfect representative between us and God. And he's able to do what we can't do. And so, so much of the season, we focus on who Jesus is, but we also focus on how he came. Because how Jesus came tell us a lot about why Jesus came. Just as I could tell a lot about how my boss was dressed as to why he was there, we can tell a lot about Jesus' purpose by how he was dressed, by the way he came that first Christmas. We are continuing a series that we've called, What's the Big Deal About Christmas? We believe that Jesus is a big deal. We believe that God taking on flesh is, is history changing, it's life changing... And this is why. It's not just uh, who it is in that manger, but it's the fact that he's in a manger. An animal's feeding trough. And so this morning, we want to reflect together, uh, not just on who it is that came, but how he came. If you have your Bible, I invite you to open up to Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. Uh, we have in these verses, Luke chapter 1, 46 through 55, we have a song. It's a song in the midst of the gospel narrative. It's a song that comes from Mary's lips. Mary, who the angel appeared to and said, you're going to have a child. Can you imagine this teenager's astonishment and curiosity and just need for answers when she hears this news. God is going to do the impossible and cause this virgin to conceive and have a child that will be the son of God. And Mary, in this journey of Luke, from Luke chapter 1, leading throughout the gospel, Mary is on this journey of of discovering the big deal about who this child is that she's carrying. She gets news from the angel that her cousin Elizabeth, that she is, uh, she's going to also have a child. 
And, and, and so she goes and sees Elizabeth. And, and here uh, she's with Elizabeth. And, and she breaks out into this song in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. The way that Jesus came is not what you'd expect. He, he chose this teenage girl to carry the Son of God. In Matthew chapter 1, we begin Matthew's gospel with a family tree. It's that passage that you probably usually skip over. Uh, when you come to uh, Matthew chapter 1, and it's, um, it's the family tree of Jesus. Name after name after name. And one of the things we see, and I, I love that Matthew's gospel starts with this, because one of the things that we see in this passage is that Jesus came to a broken family. Just like yours. Just like mine. Jesus came to a broken family. If you look through that family tree, you see brokenness. You see people who really failed in their lifetime. In fact, you see in Jesus' family tree, someone who went out and had a woman's Husband killed in battle so that he could cover up that he had slept with his wife. I mean, that was King David. Jesus came to a broken family tree. Jesus came to a family like yours, a family like mine where brokenness exists. It's messy and Jesus comes into a broken background. And that's part of the, the way that Jesus wants to come. He comes not in the tuxedo. He comes in the blue jeans, just like you, just like me. And he wants to identify with the brokenness of our society. So Jesus came into a broken family and then... I want us to imagine together who Jesus came to identify with. Here's Mary. She's singing this song, My soul magnifies in the Lord, rejoices in God my Savior. And she's reflecting on the fact that God chose a, a, a nobody like her. And this is one of the things that you see throughout, uh, I encourage you, sometime during this Advent season as we head into Christmas, read through Luke chapter 1 and 2. And one of the things you'll notice is that this gospel narrative elevates women to the forefront of God's plan. And, and that, that, that doesn't seem all that significant to us today, but in the day that this was written... That was countercultural. Jesus came to the margins of society. You know the margins on the paper? Uh, speaking of college, when I was in college, I'd always try to like make those margins a little bigger so my paper would uh, get longer. A anybody else try that? You, you like make your margins like two inches on each side, and then you don't have to type as much. Uh, the margins are the unused areas of the paper. The margins of society are the forgotten people of society. And that's who Jesus came to. Jesus came to a woman like Mary who, she wasn't married. She didn't have a royal, nobility, family tree. In fact, um, they would go to Bethlehem, and there wouldn't be any room. There wouldn't be a place to stay. And as I think about how Jesus came, 
I don't think it was an afterthought that there was no room in Bethlehem and he got put out in the stable. I think that Jesus wanted to put on blue jeans and show who he came to serve. You see, Jesus is born out in this animal feeding trough. And, and, I mean, who is the first person that God invites to the party? You think the Son of God, the person that's going to change the history of mankind, who, who maybe like the king, uh, Caesar, uh, shepherds. You talk about the margins, these guys are outside the margins. Jesus came to the marginalized of society. And, and, and as we look at why, at how Jesus came, I think it tells us a bit of why Jesus came. And this is, this is why we're looking at Mary's song, because I think she gets that Jesus came to the margins of society so that his might would be put in the context of mercy. Let me say that again. Jesus came to the margins of society... So that Jesus' might, his power, would be put in the context of mercy. Let me read Mary's song for us. My soul magnifies uh, the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised to our ancestors. One of the themes, the pictures that Mary has in this song is the stark contrast between the proud and the humble, the rich and the poor, the hungry and those who are content. Jesus came to the margins of society because he wanted you and me to realize that the might, the power of his saving hand doesn't come to those who earn it. It doesn't come to those who feel they deserve it. It comes to those who realize they need mercy. Mercy is this term in scripture that, that refers to God not giving us what we deserve. Mercy is God withholding his judgment from us even though we deserve it. In Romans it says all of sin falls short of the glory of God and the wages of that is death. Mercy is God withholding his judgment. Us not getting what we deserve. And so, and so what God wants to do when he comes at Christmas in the way that Jesus came, as we reflect on the shepherds, as we reflect on the stable, the manger, the, reflect on who Mary was, Mary and Joseph, these nobodies from Bethlehem. Jesus came to the margins of society to show us that his might is experienced in the context of mercy. It's not experienced in the context of deserving it, of, of living up to it, of being worthy of a king coming. It's about God coming to those who realize they don't deserve it. And that's why Jesus came the way he did. He came because he wanted to show mercy. And, 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 and Mary gets that. She gets the mercy she gets the wonder of it all. And she, here in the song, we have this beautiful picture of a God who remembers. A God who sees. A God who came not for those who live up to it, 
but those who realize they need mercy. And that's you, and that's me. I don't do this very often, but occasionally as I read scripture, um, I feel explaining it doesn't do it justice. I, that's just what I did. I tried to explain a bit of how Jesus came and the significance of it. But Mary gives this song here. And one of the things about songs, and I've shared this before, is that poetry has a way of, of, of connecting. Uh, uh, music has a way of, of connecting what we know. Okay, we know that Jesus came to the margins to show us mercy, to show us that his power isn't in overthrowing things, it's in showing mercy. And, and, and as we reflect on this, I've, I've written um, a poem, spoken word, that I'm going to end this with. And I want us to reflect together on what Mary must have been thinking, of how she must have been processing. Not only who it was who came, but how he came. Magnify magnify. My soul cries magnify, but how do I qualify that my past doesn't nullify? My name is anonymous, but now I'll be known for this. Overlooked by society, I don't come from notoriety. Money, power, influence, and might, you'd expect them to be part of my story, right? But he came for me. He came for you. I'll tell you why he came Far from power and fame, he came to the humble to make the mighty stumble. Heaven on earth, word made flesh, God became man. Am I really part of this plan? He came for the hungry, he came for the weak. He came to the margins for those who can't speak. He came for me. He came for you. It's nothing against those with power and fame. It's just that all must bow to his holy name. Rich and poor, young and old, the message of Christmas is you're part of the fold. If you place your hope, your joy, your delight in the one who came on that silent night, he came for me. He came for you. Magnify, magnify, my soul cries, magnify. My sin says disqualified, Jesus says nullified. My Savior be glorified, let this message go worldwide. He came for you.